this. I'm putting this 06 CRF 250R engine back together after we put a new cam chain in it. Um, I ended up putting, replacing this oil pump gear. Open. I mean, this will do for a little while. It's not really that big of a deal to pop this thing off. So um, I think I'm going to enter. I have to order a new one anyways for the other bike. So hopefully this will last um, for you know at least a little while. So I don't I don't see any problems with it. I mean, it's not the tightest fit, but then again, you know, it seems like it's more so the shaft that kind of moves around. That whole situation is not the most uh, you know snug fit anyway. So so this gets torqued to 47 foot-pounds and like I said I just put a screwdriver in the top of the gear set for the clutch basket and the crank and so the next thing I'm gonna do here is clean up all these surfaces and then I'm gonna get out some new gaskets and uh, put this left side cover on um, I will have to do a couple things to the cover first there's a bypass valve for the oil filter I gotta put the I wanted to try and get that out of there and clean it up just to make sure that was clear and then go ahead and uh, put it put that all back together that way I know it's clean the bypass valve is gonna work correctly and then I have to re-secure the uh, spark trigger coil from the flywheel onto the inside of the cover as well. And then I can go ahead and put all this side back together. And then the other side will just be cleaning up the same surface as well. And then putting the right side of the, the crankcase cover on. So I'll get that stuff done and then bring you guys back. That way you're not bored with that. All right, so one thing I want to suggest and highly suggest... I don't think my situation was that big of a deal, but if you guys have had some type of uh, damage to the point to where there was a lot of debris inside your oil filter cavity here, um, there's quite a few ports here. You want to make sure that you pull out this oil pressure bypass valve and then clean out. You want to blow out here, uh, here, and here and then go um, in here and blow out each one of these ports here to make sure that all those galleys are nice and clear. And then, especially including this, by this pressure relief valve here, you can pop this pin out and then there's a spring and piston on the inside there. And so you just wanna make sure that all this stuff is nice and clean before you put it back, before you put everything back together. Don't lose any of this stuff either. Just like that. And then you just have this little snap ring here. Make sure that's clean. Make sure you got oil on the, the O-ring there. And then it just pops back in. And these do have quite a bit of pressure. Uh, they can have pressure, especially if the, the O-ring's a little <clears throat> dry or swollen or whatever. Uh, they will be kind of tough to pull out at times just want to make sure all the edges are pushed down alright 
So I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that whole situation there because that's, uh, you know, it's definitely something you want to make sure you get done. Okay, so I'm still tearing into this. Uh, I'm actually putting everything back together. Um, I saw a little bit of, it looked like white milky substance inside the clutch compartment. And obviously you have the water pump right there. So when I did a full gasket kit, I did not, stupid me, um, I wasn't paying attention. And I didn't realize that right on the actual impeller itself, it says, LH. And, you know, things just kind of happen that way, and you don't, you know, you're not fully paying attention to every little last detail. So, when I was trying to take this off last time, I was actually tightening it. And so I was like, you know what, I don't want to wreck it. Um, so, I, I just kind of skipped over it, and it's been fine until now. I'm assuming until now. So, what I did is I ended up just taking a pair of vice grips here and put it around these two little, little uh, areas on either side of the inside of the shaft. And then I put this down in my vise. And then I just kind of heated up the impeller a little bit. And then you're supposed to t lefty loosey, righty tighty. Well, it's opposite. So it's lefty tighty, righty loosey. So you, it, if you're tightening it, as a normal bolt or nut, it will come off just because of the way the engine spins and it keeps it on there, you know, as it's spinning forward instead of like trying to undo it. So, so anyways, so now I'm going to pop this, these seals out because the, I ended up saving the rest of the seals. And so I'm going to go ahead and pop these in there and, uh, yeah, get these replaced and taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to use my trusty seal puller. It's a little big for the job, but you know what? Should be okay. So it doesn't look like it's in very good shape, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and replace it. And now the other side though, this bearing needs to come out. So what I'm going to do is heat up this area and then pop it out from this side. Shouldn't take too much to pop it out. Make sure when you pull these out that you don't scuff the uh, surface that they seal to this outer well this inner bore you don't want to scuff that up with the edge of that because it's pretty sharp so just take your time make sure you're being gentle I want to clean this up real well so I'm gonna let this cool down and then uh, finish the rest of this here but either way you want to make sure you clean these surfaces up real well before you put it back before you put the new s seals in and don't touch the surface it's freaking hot <laughs> all right so one thing you want to do first is make sure that you fill these inner lips here with grease And then these face, these go back to back so they face each other. This flat edge goes towards the inside.
All right, so check out this valve. Look at how sharp that edge is compared to the one below it. Profile's totally different. So that was wearing. Look how sunk in it is compared to the rest of these. That is some crazy damage, folks. Doesn't seem like the valve seats destroyed. I'm gonna have the local shop check it out though for sure. All right, so I think I just about got everything that there is. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together. Uh, we got our stage one hot cam. We got our caps, we got our retainer rings. We got our new intake springs. We have all of our cotters and our uh, spring uh, washers. We got new valves, stem seals. We got our caps. One of them is new. Uh, the other one is in really good shape. And same thing with all the intakes. Or, I'm sorry, the, all the valves here. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. And you want to put your condensed coils, the ones that are wound the tightest, at the bottom. Do you see how there's a bigger space right here, right from this first coil turn? Well, this one's a lot tighter, so those go at the bottom. All right, so there's the exhaust. And these intakes are 14751-KRN A00. Thank you. 
There's one. That is it. That looks awesome. I got a brand new Pro X kit of shims. All right, the head is on. And we're doing our second round of torque. The head bolt, the head nuts get torqued to 29 foot pounds. And you go in three steps, cross pattern. So I did 10, 19, now I'm doing 29. that's it okay so I'm in the process of putting the cam in and what you want to do is you want to line up that little mark with the notch on the inside threads of the cover there and then you also want to make sure that Those dots right there and there are lined up with that arrow. So that little mark on the flywheel should be just about lined up with that notch right there. And that will mean that the engine's a top dead center. What you want to do is bring your clean parts over. What I did is I already put 3.1 millimeter, it's probably too big to be honest, 3.1 millimeter shims underneath the lifters and then what you want to do is you want to slide this bearing all the way over. First thing we need to do is loosen up the cam chain tensioner. And then once you have the cam chain tensioner loosened up, you can go ahead and slip your cam into the chain here. And what you want to do is get the lobes to where they're facing back, but on like a diagonal. And then you can check and see if the two lines on the side of the cam gear align with the top of the head. I am almost there. I might be off a tooth.
All right, that looks good to me. All right, so the next step, and I'll go ahead and put the rocker arm in. And then the rocker arm pivot pin. Honestly, that feels pretty tight the way it is already. Oops. All right. And the last step here, well, now I wouldn't say last, but before we check the clearance, the tolerances, we got to put the, the cam caps on. These are labeled right and in. So intake, there we go, took a little bit, these get torqued to 12 foot pounds, once again make sure that the inside is on the intake, it really can go only go in one way, and what you want to make sure is you don't drop this down into the engine compartment, or the flywheel compartment. I'm going to go ahead and torque these in a cross hatch pattern as well. All right, so now we get our feeler gauges out. So we're looking for five thousandths on the intakes, plus or minus one. So if you go six, you're, you're going to be at the high end, you'd be better off. And then 11 on the exhausts. So that was six. That's five. Four. That's what I figured. Figured it wasn't going to be much. So, all right, let's see where we are in the exhaust. So we will start at eleven. Nope. Let's do. Let's go down to five. All right. There's eight. All right. So it seems like eight on that side. I'm gonna guess seven on that side. Nope. Six. Yep. Six and f six and eight. Let's try a nine. Ooh, it's real tight. But yep, we can fit a nine in there. And the seven, we could not fit a seven on the other side. Or can we? Ooh. It's really tight. Nine is what we'll call it. And pretty much nothing on the intakes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll pop this back off and then we'll try some new shims. Okay, so we're gonna take 
the cam back out. And then we're going to switch out the shims. I should be able to get the, the exhaust down this turn. Okay, so we had seven on this side and nine on this side. So that would mean we need four thousandths less. So on the left, we're gonna want 95, 97. So 95 and 97. So that's a one ninth, that's a 97 thousandths right there. So we'll put that on the left side. That's a 2.45 millimeter, and that one's a 95, 2.4 millimeter. Let's go ahead and pull the cam all the way out. Like I said, you move the left side bearing in, and that allows you to bring the, shift the cam downward. All right, let's check the intakes or the exhaust real quick. Hopefully those are dead on. Nice. Let's start off small on these intakes. Let's go with two. So we're going to have to go a lot smaller on these intakes. So let me go ahead and skip over the process and then I'll show you what I got. I had to go down so much. Oh, that's good. Went down from 310 to 17. So, you take a five and a one and a half, that'll give you a six and a half. Nope, six on the money. And then nine and a half. So I need to go down. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Wasn't getting any readings before I went down from 310 to 29 to 27 to 2.2, and then I went down to 2.05, and then I was said screw it and went down to 1.7, and this is where I'm at. So let me get those and I'll be back. All right, so I winded, I wound up with a 170 on the left and a 1.8 millimeter on the right. So we got on this exhaust side, we got 2.40 and 2.45, and then in the intake we got 1.7 and 1.8. A little lopsided, but don't matter. All right, let's get the cam in. Now, mind you guys, this is a Stage one hot cam. It's like I'm off one tooth. <clears throat> so, needs to go that way. 
So what you want to do is you want to lift up on the same side you want it to turn. You want to lift up on the chain and just shift it one tooth. Huh, wonder why I didn't see that before. Yes. Yeah. 